right, live here with the Came TV Argo. So this is a very cool stabilizer. I actually need to work on rebalancing it right now. I just uh, made a balancing and setup tutorial video for three axis gimbal stabilizers. So you can go ahead and just watch this live stream right now while I just fiddle with it. Um, if you're thinking about buying a three axis gimbal, this is actually very, very similar to the DJI Ronin M. Uh, there's actually some perks about this stabilizer over the Ronin M. So that's why I went for this one. Um, and I'll talk about that in my review video. It will be posted on Monday, 5 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. Um, so just watch me fiddle with it. Uh, I'm just rebalancing it. There's some things I would like to do different with it. But it is very, very cool. Um, we have carbon fiber handlebars, carbon fiber uh, balancing stand. So this is really, really cool. Uh, let me go ahead and remove the camera here. See if I can get you guys a close up of the system here. removing the camera right now okay this comes off cool I just gotta adjust a few things all right how is everyone's Christmas Adjusting a few things here. How mandatory is it to have a monitor? That's a very good question. Thank you for asking that. Uh, you know, if you have a tiltable screen, not too mandatory, in my opinion. Um, especially if a Sony camera, if you have a Sony camera, you're good. Uh, on top of that, I mount my iPhone to this rig and I use the Wi-Fi uh, stream and I just use my iPhone as a monitor um, but I wouldn't say it's mandatory I don't think so um, if you have a tiltable screen I think you're okay in my opinion so I wouldn't worry about that I need to just uh, remove this plate adjust it a little bit here. Uh, any more questions, let me know. Yeah, so I'm just gonna rebalance it. You're gonna see how quickly I can rebalance it while I talk to you guys. And then uh, we'll uh, turn it on and see what happens, right? <laughs> and I'll show you how cool the remote controller is, how small it is, which I really, really like. Yeah, that's what it is. I'm just loosening uh, the quick release plate right now. Just tilt this down so you can see what I'm doing. I am loosening this up just a little bit. That way I can flip over the quick release plate because I was having an inaccurate balance so I'm just fixing this I had such a fun time shooting with this thing today you have no idea it was so much fun Definitely more fun to use something like this than a traditional steady cam. 
I don't know why it's just maybe it's just because it's so new and the technology is completely different but this was just so much fun to use back up here you guys can take a look at my setup actually you know what I'll do okay that should be good this is the came TV Argo Follow focus systems I've had been too expensive. Any good tips on how to manage focus when you don't have anything to change it while shooting? Uh, <laughs> if you don't have a follow focus, you gotta use your hand. I mean, there's no way. Unless um, you stop down. Uh, when you stop down aperture, so when we look at a lens like this, and let's say you're at f22, uh, more things are in focus. When you open up the aperture, you have a shallower depth of field where focus is a little, it's a little more sensitive. When you stop down, focus is less sensitive. So more things are in focus when you stop down. Uh, however, when you stop down, you lose light. So you have that issue there too. So what I like to do, uh, especially with the wide angle, um, this is a 14 millimeter wide angle lens from Rokinon. I keep things, I keep this lens half, uh, basically around seven stops. Uh, that way things are relatively in focus. I keep it at uh, infinite focus. And basically almost everything is in focus. There's sometimes I run into issues with focus and I have to prop up the camera and refocus. But when you stop down, more things are in focus rather than having uh, a wider aperture. So uh, that's a good tip if you wanna keep more things in focus. Sorry that my face is cut off here, I just wanted to show you the stabilizer. I'm just rebalancing some stuff here. I don't even wanna ever put it back in its case, it's just cool to look at, to be honest. It's really, really cool. So I'm going to put on the camera. Make sure that this is loose. Tensioner. Oops. Good thing it's on a stand. Okay, let's see how well the tilt is. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm actually gonna move the quick release plate back. I gotta unscrew it and uh, redo that part again. Cause I don't like messing with my quick release plate. I only wanna focus on the gimbal's quick release plate. So I'm just gonna push this back a little bit more. Good. I hope. Just 
gimbals are very, very sensitive, so balancing is could take a while if you're new to this whole thing. But because I've been working with glide cams for years now, it's really easy for me to balance. And this video I'm releasing on Monday will teach you exactly how to balance this sort of rig. Lens bracket on up. I mean, even though it's not going to do much, it's not high enough, but it's fine. It looks cool. I'll leave it on. It gives me that mental boost of the lens being secure. <laughs> so I'm just checking to make sure that it's balanced. It's not 100% balanced. I'm going to do a slightly better job here. looks pretty spot on. Okay. Let's see the yaw. Let's see here. Let me make sure that it's not tilting back on me. Okay, so it's still leaning a little too far to the right. perfectly balance it that way um, when I perfectly balance it it works better now the biggest question is I know that a lot of people are probably wondering if you're in the market for a stabilizer whether you should get a Ronin M or this I got this um, because it can shoot with the camera upright in inverted mode and it has fine-tuning adjustments that the Ronin M doesn't have. So those are kind of deal breakers for me when there's something out there that has it and the Ronin doesn't. Uh, and this comes with the case as well, like a really good quality case. Uh, the Ronin doesn't have that. Ronin M doesn't have that. How sensitive do you need to be to able to change your focus by touching the lens? I can imagine that if you're not too careful, it would have an effect on the video. No. These motors are extremely powerful, so whenever I touch the camera, whenever I need to make an adjustment, the, the motors compensate. Uh, they're very, they're stiff. So they're rock solid, so when you touch the camera to change focus, it doesn't change it. It's not a glide cam. Glide cams, yeah, if, if I had it on a glide cam or a cam and I wanted to change a camera setting, you would definitely see a bump in the footage, but with this thing, no way. No bumps. Check the yaw. Yaw needs a little bit of work. So I use this up here. Just a tad. Just a tad. It looks good. Yeah, it's perfect now. Yeah, it is perfect. Even at that setting. We're good with that. All right, so uh, let's turn it on.
Here's a remote controller. I've been shooting a lot today, um, a few hours, and uh, do I have to calibrate the sensors? It's a little shaky. So I might have to calibrate the sensors here. I don't know why it's shaking like that. So we're gonna calibrate the sensors <laughs> because it's shaking the whole table. So we're gonna go ahead and press, click the remote four times. One, two, three, four. Stop shaking. Perfect. We're gonna actually calibrate the frame now because it's still shaking. One, two, three, four, five. Five clicks should do it. tilting a little bit. Um, some people have said that their Ronin M shuts down randomly. Someone, maybe because of HDMI, cause strain, what do you think? I don't know, unless it was battery failure, I don't see why um, the battery would just shut off. It's really unlikely for something like that to happen. Uh, I know the Inspire one had that issue when it first came out. Um, but right now, the gimbal is adjusting itself. It's fixing its um, roll right now. Um, but I've never, I've, I haven't seen anyone complain about the Ronin M shutting off. That's a little weird. So let's see. Stop shaking. I don't know why it's shaking still. It's probably a minor, minor adjustments probably. Let's see what's going on. Not when I pick it up, it stops shaking. Maybe it just wanted to be touched. It wanted to be loved, because now it stopped shaking. Not shaking again. <laughs> I wonder why. Let me try shutting it off and turning it back on. Hmm. Wow, it's malfunctioning, guys. I wonder what's going on. This is bizarre. I might have to hook it up to the computer and see what the sensors are seeing. Let's try it again. Don't know why the motors are tripping out like that. Now it stopped. Hmm. I think what's happening is that when the motors are shaking, uh, it's making minor adjustments in um, the roll. So very minor adjustments.
modes with the thumb controller would be the function that I'm interested in. Can you change the motors via the Ronin app? So this is not the Ronin. This is the Came Argo, Came TV Argo. So this is the Ronin M's competitor. All right, so uh, that's what we have right now. But yes, this also has uh, modes like the Ronin M. It calmed down, see? Now it's behaving the way it should. Sometimes gimbals can trip out. Um, just like everything, everything that runs off of a battery, it can glitch. Everything that's powered by electricity glitches. It's inevitable, unfortunately. Um, but it happened. But now it's behaving as it should. So I'm gonna shut it off and turn it back on again. And uh, let's see if it glitches again. Okay, shut off. Let's turn it back on. Um, but I believe you know a thing or two about Ronin M. Yes, I know a lot about the Ronin M. Um, so let's go ahead and turn this baby around. Um, one of the biggest differences, um, let me actually prop uh, the camera somewhere and show you the different modes that this uh, stabilizer has. So let me find an area here. Uh, I want to get the camera high enough so you guys see what's going on. Bring the stabilizer and show you the different modes. <clears throat> so before you think about getting a glide cam, consider one of these. Uh, just consider it. I, I have both. I have three different, this is my fourth camera stabilizer. So if God forbid this one just stops working, I can rely on my handy dandy glide cam, uh, which doesn't run off of power. So I'm going to have both in my car whenever I have a shoot. And uh, I'll, I'll bring over the stabilizer right now so you guys see the different shooting modes. Okay. There it is. It's very quiet. Let's go ahead and do inverted. So this is one of the differences between uh, this version and the Ronin M is that when you shoot an inverted, the camera is upright. The Ronin M doesn't do that. So that way I don't have to flip my camera in post. I can still have the camera upright and I have a good uh, clear image of the display. You can easily look at the display from here. So that's really cool. And it's a continuous 360 degree uh, roll, which is great. There's slip rings on the system, so you won't be able to damage any wires. And it comes with a wireless video transmitter. So you can hook up a wireless, um, what's it called, a wireless uh, monitor to this system. But because I have a Sony, I just hook up my iPhone and my iPhone behaves, behaves like a, uh, a monitor. And then, so I'm gonna put this back into regular mode here. Okay. Uh, we're gonna go into mode two. So this is actually going to lock my tilt. So tilt will remain the same. And then mode three locks the tilt and it locks the pan. And I just go into briefcase mode like that, which is something I really like. All right. 
gets heavy after a while, I'm not gonna lie. All right, let's go back to the table. Let's talk more about it. So if you're thinking about getting one of these, uh, good, you should. Because I never thought I would own one. I thought that uh, it was kind of a waste of money, but then I bought one, and now I'm realizing how awesome they are. <laughs> um, why are you shaking? It's shaking the whole table. Let's try calibrating the sensors again. Let's see what you guys are saying here. We're trying to look at the comments. Okay, we'll compare. Yeah, so the only reason why you would go for Glidecam definitely would be budget. Um, so the motor shaking might be because it needs a heavier payload. I'm not sure, maybe. Um, maybe I need to go into the uh, controller and change some settings, but they recommend not to do that. So let me see if that continues happening. Um, it looks like it adjusts and then stops. Uh, so we'll see. Yeah, see, it, it continues to shake like that. Don't know why. When I pick it up, it doesn't shake. Man, look how bad it's shaking the table. <laughs> Let's try and calibrate the sensors again. Figure out which motor causes the shaking. I think it's the pan motor. All right, take a closer look. So you can have a look here at the bottom. Uh, this table is also very, very flimsy. So, I don't know. Let me see what happens when I hold it and pan. Let's see if it does the same thing. Yeah, I might have to do some adjustments. Yeah. All right, so I'll work on that. <clears throat> I wasn't doing that earlier. Don't know what's going on, but I'm gonna take a look at the settings here and see what's going on. All right, so uh, yeah, I'm gonna calibrate it. Uh, thank you for that advice. It might be sucking too much power, you, you might be right, because it looks like it's only the pan motor that's causing that issue. Um, but it's intermittent. It's only happening when I use the remote. Yeah. All right, well, thank you so much for the advice. Uh, thank you for joining me on this live stream. Just wanted to show you this, compare it to the Ronin-M.
Um, it has the fine tune adjustment, adjustment knobs, comes with the case, and it shoots inverted uh, with the camera upright. So consider that when you're deciding the two. All right, guys, I'll talk to you in a bit. Thank you so much for watching, and uh, stay tuned for my setup tutorial video coming out on Monday. All right, see you later.